What's up? Uh, it's me again. You know, I you're on my channel, so watch some videos. So today I wanted to do a talk about hmm, improvement pitfalls, right? But not. It's kind of hard to like just like bring it up. So I guess I'll kind of talk about my upcoming. Well, not my upcoming. My kind of like upbringing, and you know where I came from as a player and stuff. So. Uh, I guess I'll like flesh it out a little bit and then I'll kind of go into the main points that I have that I really want to focus on. So uh, I started playing fighting games in this like indiscernible year when Guilty Gear XX came out and I was like super young and I was just like mashing on PS2 and I didn't start like learning anything until I was like 12 or like 13 and I was playing like I was playing Eno in GGAC on a GameCube controller on the Wii port of Guilty Gear Accent Core. And I was like really trying so hard to do like HCL FRC Air Dash and I got it like once and I was like wow fighting games are cool, right? So fast forward, right? Maybe a couple years from then Blazebook comes out, BBCT and uh... I start playing Noel. then, I actually start going to tournaments. I just found a local one in New York, I decided to go, and I didn't really understand anything about fighting games as like a competitive thing. I just played and, you know, I wasn't, I'm not really like a competitive person, I kind of just wanted to see what it was like to like play well, right? So. I mean, that's a lot of like condensing, but ultimately that's kind of like what the feeling was, right? So I kind of really got into that. Um, I net played a lot, but that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about net play. Gotta be real careful. So, anyway, uh, I'll just make the rest of it really concise. You know, I net played for a really long time, but then I started going to tournaments more and more. I think it was about my. Maybe it was after about a full year or two of playing in tournament that I won my first like big tournament, which was like NEC 2011. So that was about two years uh, actually from playing, and that was like a pretty pretty good one. I was like 16 or something, and it, you know it was it was a good it was a good time. I didn't really feel so proud or anything, but I guess that also kind kind of goes into why I think I excelled, right? So you know, fast forward, I'm I'm just keeping up with Blaze Blue. I am drawn by this pursuit of performing something well, and I don't really know what it is. And eventually, I think in 2012, I play like top level Japanese players for the first time and I kind of understood like I was like oh it's a game too it's not really just like something that I have to do well it's also a game where I have to kind of interact with another player so yeah I played for like a bajillion years without really really understanding that maybe going through the motions of it and like I knew how to address these things but it wasn't my focus in play right so the main thing was I got that experience really going to tournaments and like playing the top level players and stuff. But you know, we'll, we'll kind of back it out. We'll go into like a little more general thing. Uh, from then on, I was born. That's the day I was born, right? The day I played Soji, I hit him with AOA at, at like the most like galaxy brain time, and I was like, wow, I'm a genius. And then everything was like downhill from there. But so I have three main points for improvement pitfalls that I think are completely awful and I hope you don't fall into them. So the first one and this is kind of like an overarching one that like you know bleeds into the second the kind of like winning instead of like improving mentality and the whole idea of well it works you know it gets me the win that kind of thing this kind of thinking at all is like it's probably gonna stunt your growth right so when something works in a fighting game 
you don't look at it as like an absolute, right? It's like information, right? Because that's ultimately what it is. I hit this person at this time, or say I do an overhead, right? And it hits someone because they're not holding down or they're not holding back at that time, right? That's the information that I can glean from it. So taking it as information instead of, oh, I always do this overhead here. This is a 50-50 mix up because everyone I play and all of my sister's friends can't block this, right? So you are already kind of jumping to conclusions and that's kind of a problem, right? Instead of like really like being perceptive about it and like, you know, trying to make the most of this information that you get. A lot of people get caught up in the desire to win and they're like, you know, I want to interpret this in a way that makes it seem like I have the best chance of winning and that's not going to give you the best chance of winning. What's going to give you the best chance of winning is being able to parse the information as realistically as possible and actually like, you know, make something with it, right? So you got to be a real objective. It's not about winning because sometimes, you know, maybe you're playing someone online and their hand spazzes out, right? And you think they're joking, but maybe they actually have carpal tunnel or something and then they couldn't block your mix up, but they could see your mix up, right? So then you structure your whole offense around this and then you go to a tournament and then Johnny Donuts, who doesn't have carpal tunnel but has good reactions, destroys your entire game plan, right? And what do you chalk it up to? A fluke? Because you structured something and, oh, this guy just guessed right like 50,000 times in a row? No, right? Be careful. Just be careful. So, well, it works is never good justification. It's good information is what it is. So the second big thing that I wanted to talk about was net play, right? And using net play properly. So this is kind of relevant with the first point, but like talking about things that work online, especially in a like delayed environment or kind of coming in with the idea that, you know, everyone's playing in delay, so it equalizes out. That's not really the case because a lot of characters, like say characters with like instant overheads, right? Their ability to perform offense is like significantly less changed by the induction of del well, the introduction of delay, rather than doing something like Gauntlet Hades, right? That's why everyone always complains about blocking Gauntlet Hades online. So you got to be really careful with that because if you change your offensive structure, right? If you have offensive structure that you wouldn't have normally when you play online, it also means that your neutral presence is way more threatening, right? And if your neutral presence is way more threatening, you might get your opponent guessing more neutral to deal with your neutral threat because of your pressure threat that doesn't exist in the real world and then from there you start getting into an rps game in neutral that is based around their reactions to your increased threat neutral game that doesn't really exist right so we've like derived four like huge aspects of the game that just get completely warped just because offense is scarier right so uh, yeah, you, you gotta be real careful with that, right? So that's one of the big things for me when I was younger and I was playing online. I always wanted to make sure that what I was doing and how I was strategizing and how I was theorizing was based in where I intended to play, which was in tournaments and offline and against people, right? So things that are relevant to, I guess like, you know, my opponent and what they'd be looking at on the screen and where they'd see me on the screen and stuff like that or like my mix up and like, you know, how I'd make it tricky. Those kinds of considerations, I always tested them out on myself to get a good feel for it. Or, you know, I had relatively good information on how people would interact with these things. And ultimately kind of net play was a good way for me to practice like muscle memory or get uh, exposure to certain characters or like, you know, aspects of matchups and stuff like that. But in terms of like developing a meta, developing an RPS, understanding how strong options are, 
I just had to be introduced to them through Netplay, and then I had to analyze them on my own. Just because they worked on me online didn't... Well, I, you know, I kind of knew maybe I shouldn't really be afraid of this. Or, you know, I did something. Say I threw someone on, like, their wake-up, like, 50 bajillion times, and I was like, okay, cool, here's my 50-50 mix-up, strike throw, right? But I go offline, and LK texts it every time, and I'm just a stupid kid, right? Yeah. So, you gotta be careful with Netplay 2, playing around delay, and it kind of goes in hand in hand with the winning thing, because I know a lot of people like winning, but, you know, if you really want to win at a different place, right, you gotta handle it a little differently. And my fourth thing, my fourth thing, and this is up to all the mid-level players trying to break into high level out there, time invested is not effort. That is, like, crazy, right? You can spend a thousand hours doing something, like, menial, and it's just, it's still menial, right? So, I, I like to run this analogy about, like, you know, someone goes to gym, right? So, say I go to gym. You could think about me in the gym, right? So, I go to gym, and I take a five-pound dumbbell and I'm like flexing and I'm like cool this is godlike I'm gonna become so strong right I'm gonna become strong and high level so every day I do five million reps with this five pound dumbbell and then I go to like the weightlifters conference and I'm like hey guys am I strong I lifted this five million times uh, right no I'm not strong right so instead of doing anything more difficult right instead of well did i just like i just shook my my screen <laughs> that's how strong i'm getting so instead of doing something actually difficult right instead of moving from five to ten and then using that to go to something more difficult and constantly increasing my capacity to lift right i only increased my amount of repetitions Right? And that's what the kind of like the time angle is like as well, right? If you spend a lot of time doing a lot of like light work, you're not gonna really get anywhere, right? You're not gonna be able to hit those higher levels that you'll want to, even if it's for like shorter increments or shorter periods of time, right? Because ultimately, even for the strongest guy in the world, right? He's not gonna be able to lift his maximum weight all the time but he can hit that high level, right? And that's a high level that you can't hit unless you work your way up there and do more difficult things, more difficult things, more difficult things. So you can't take your training passively. It has to be a very active thing where you're giving yourself new difficult things, giving yourself like a bigger load to deal with in terms of like, you know, how much stuff you can think about or how much stuff you consider in your strategy, right? So those are the things that are really important. It's not really like you just simply learn more about the game, right? It's not like that. It's not like you're like, you know, I'm gonna finish reading this textbook and I'm gonna memorize everything and I'll be a good player. No, no, it's not like that. It's about the load that you can handle and stuff. Anyway, I, I think that analogy was pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't really have much else to say. You know, don't don't be ashamed if you've been playing for a while and you don't really like hit successes. I I mean I mean I feel like I'm talking from a place of like complete I don't I have no better word except for privilege. But like you know, early successes in tournaments is nice, but as I played more and more over years and I got to know so many people over years, like, what really kept me around and, you know, the people who I respected the most were the ones who just kept working, right? Despite, like, bad performances and stuff like that, like, that work ethic is, like, something that is actually so admirable to me. I... 
I knew so many people like that. And, you know, they've come and gone. And to this day, you know, I still have, like, very, very fond memories of those people as, like, growing up in the scene and stuff. And, you know, it kind of keeps me going. I... I try not to think about successes, right? I try not to think about successes at all. I try not to think about, well, I wouldn't say I try not to think about successes. I try not to think about successes any differently from my failures, right? They're both kind of like good information for me to, you know, come to conclusions off of and grow from. So, yeah. Hmm. I think that's about it uh i hope i could maybe have like brought something to your attention i think it's a pretty important thing to talk about obviously if you have any questions about me or you know you want to you want to talk about something or clarify it you know it's definitely start a discussion in the comments if you want to my eye hurts i'm tired thank you for watching as always